Welcome back guys, and this is our little day trip to Magnetic Island. Uh, in this episode, we swapped our four drives for some mopeds. We actually didn't even hear of this place until we got to Townsville. I don't know how. This place has um, a lot to offer, and somewhere like Rottnest Island in Perth is very well promoted, and you can kind of hear a lot about it. I'm sure a lot of people have heard of Rottnest that haven't been to Perth, whereas Magnetic Island, which is like two and a half times bigger, has um, been unheard of by both me and Gibbo. So as soon as we heard about it and that we could hire mopeds for the day, for as cheap as it was, we decided to take the ferry over and uh, have a look around. Well, we've just got the peds and we're sitting at Horseshoe Bay. This is the other side of the island to the ferry. First impressions are pretty mean. <laughs> This place here is a nice holiday house. What did we say it was? 3500 for four nights, 10 people. So get 10 people, 350 bucks. Not too bad. But we got the ped, so we're just gonna basically go everywhere we can and have a little hike. Um, I think they say you're not allowed to take these down the dirt roads. And there's a bit of water and sand on the road from the recent rains, but 40 bucks for the day, you can't go wrong. After we got the peds, we kind of just took every road that we could on the island to have a look around and kind of see what it had to offer. This bit here was just a new estate that was getting put up, so there was lots of new houses. And then first thing we saw was a little rainforest walk, so we took that. It only took about five minutes out of our day, so um, it was quite interesting. It was full of bats, a lot of spiderwebs, and a few mozzies, so we didn't last too long there. I apologise for the moped footage in this video as I had to hold the moped with one hand and try and film with the other with the GoPro and unfortunately it is a little bit shaky so sorry about that. Well, we're on our way up to Fort's Walk, I think it was called? Yeah. Yeah, Fort's Walk. Apparently the most popular walk on the island. It's up to what looks like a bunker or something that's on top of this hill so a little bit of a hike but this place is so much bigger than we expected. Like there's a school, a skate park, pub, like multiple pubs, like heaps of houses, cars are rare, trucks. Like there's just estates going up everywhere. So definitely doesn't even compare close to Rottnest what we have in Perth. We were lucky enough to see two koalas on this walk. Apparently there was also echidnas, but unfortunately we didn't see any of those. So just two koalas, which happened to be sleeping at the time. But yeah, there is a good chance that if you do go to the island, you will see um, an array of different wildlife. Alright, so, made it to the top of the fort walk. And this is the old fort that's literally right on top, like nearly the highest point on the whole whole island basically. You get a pretty unreal view. That's also pretty amazing to think that someone built this over 50 years ago. Got everything up here and managed to make it. I was actually really glad that I took the drone on this trip because it was a day trip where all we took was basically a backpack, some water, and I took my camera gear obviously. Originally I wasn't gonna take the drone and then I thought, you know, I don't know what's over there, so um, why not take it? And this shot here was enough to prove exactly why I was happy to take it. It just shows off the, the size of the island and kind of, well, this is definitely one of the most scenic hikes that you could do on the trip. Yeah, it's an absolute winner. We are now moved over to the communications tower. So that way, is where we were before, this one's actually a little bit higher. And they've obviously used it now for communications for the island, but there's a good bit of info here that uh, this was built, completed in 1943. Um, after Townsville had a few bombs dropped on them, they kind of scoped this joint out and started setting up for a bit of a military base. Um, and yeah, once Japan had the atomic bombs dropped at Hiroshima, uh, they ended the war and sold all their stuff. So these buildings are doing pretty well for 80 years old. But you cannot beat the view. But if you are heading over here and you're looking to do the walk, I think it was about a K and a half, quite steep. Uh, we saw about two koalas on the way up, and I highly recommend it. On the island, there's only a set area that you can actually take the mopeds on. It is very hilly, and the roads are quite average. There was also a lot of rain there recently, so there was a lot of sand and stuff on the island. So 
The mopeds did struggle on a lot of the big hills and it was quite sketchy, but you can hire them on a basic car license, which is a bonus. And um, they definitely get you everywhere you need to go. Um, just here, we run into a little rock wallaby, which I guess in similarity to Rotnest Island, they have the quokkas. This was uh, Magnetic Island's version of the quokka. This guy was nice and friendly and I think he thought my little GoPro was something to eat so he came over for a little look. But yeah, unfortunately Gibbo's helmet actually had a GoPro mount on it and I didn't have the little clip-on mount with me which would have made life a lot easier but um, therefore I had to use the handlebar grip. We just got down to Arthur Beach, which is, you can see behind me, absolutely unreal. It's about a 15 minute walk down from the car park. Used to be able to drive down here, but I think either the hill's too steep for the mopeds, because the mopeds really struggle on these big hills. So as you can see, that house in the background, it's actually got its own website that you can hire out. Um, I believe it's a four day minimum. And going off what the guy that hired the moped to us said, I think it was something around 3,000 a night. Um, Absolutely ridiculous, but if you look at the view, you've got that whole beach to yourself, and further on, there is Florence Beach as well, which is also a very similar beach, and probably the two nicest ones on the island. There is a track down to that house, which used to be open, and I think a lot of the locals are quite pissed off because that's since been closed due to um, the mass tourists that now come over. You can park at the top, which is what we did, and walk down, it's only about 15, 20 minutes, but it is quite a steep hill. Unfortunately, we forgot our snorkeling gear, uh, we didn't realise, as we were used to so much, so many areas being closed due to crocodiles and stuff like that, we thought not to bring the snorkeling gear. Although pretty much most places on the island they say that you can snorkel and can swim. So just a little bit of information if you're on your way over, make sure to take some snorkeling gear with you. And if you've got the money, then hire that house out for a day because... Well, we've got about an hour left before we have to leave. So. We thought we'd squeeze in one more thing. We've been running around on the mopeds all day. We looked just behind where we had a bit of food to eat. On Google Maps it showed us as a, as a lookout. <laughs> Which unfortunately is now closed. And uh, turns out there's a secret little hidden waterfall in the middle of the island, so. That's pretty cool. Well, we've had an absolute ripper day here at Magnetic Island. Um, if you ever get to Townsville or around it, make make the journey out to do it, I reckon, because it will not disappoint. I think all up probably cost us a bit over $100. That was ferry tickets, scooter hire. I think it was $2 to fill the scooter up after a full day of riding and like a $30 pub feed. So um, highly rate this place. Walking back to the ferry now, I think we're going to make a 4 o'clock one. We decided to catch that so we can get to a camp tonight rather than get back to Townsville at dark. Yeah, make the trip over and you won't regret it.